Hello and welcome to a new series of videos in which I rescue useful and interesting tools and items from a nearby scrapyard by repairing them or using them to build something new. A few weeks ago I started to help a group of friends in upgrading this old hangar here that they are reshaping into a true refuge of creativity one might say. Next to an artist's studio and a dance floor for the occasional party or music session, a number of workshops for working on wood, metal, plastics and electronics are in the making. And in order to find building materials for the metal and plastic workshops, we visited a nearby scrapyard that turned out to be a treasure trove of decommissioned industrial parts and materials. I have already retrieved a number of really interesting things from this place and will show their return to life in the next few episodes. On our first trip we actually came here to retrieve gear motors and steel tubes. But by mere chance I also found a very rare tool that caught my attention. An old blacksmith's vise, also called a post vise. And at least here in Germany a post vise is part of the traditional blacksmith workshop. And I restored one of these vises a few years ago and I'm now using it in my shop on a daily basis for all kinds of tasks and have come to like it very much. Post vices redirect the force of the hammer blows into the ground rather than just into the workbench and are normally fastened to the ground even though mine here is mounted on a welded seal support that I bought together with the vise. They are also designed for quick opening and closing allowing for the swift handling of the red hot work pieces that are quickly cooling down. There is no time to be lost when forging hot steel. To get the vise back on track I will start by disassembling it. I start by removing the crank that presses the two jaws together. Dirt, rust and grime stuck in the threads are removed with a wire brush and the crank can be rotated counterclockwise. Both ends of the crank are only attached very loosely to the vise by means of these little pegs here. The next part that I want to take off is this very heavy steel plate here that is used to fasten the vise to the top of a workbench. The same nuts that hold this plate also hold a primitive spring that is supposed to push the jaws apart when the vise is opened. I use a wire brush to remove as much of the old paint from the threads as possible before trying to actually unscrew them. After applying a fair amount of WD-40 I manage to get the nuts loose and the plate and spring can be removed. The last major step in disassembling the vise is to remove the front jaw. It is held by one or two really old bolts though and the bigger of the two doesn't seem to move at all. After trying various methods I drive the bolt out of the hole by brute force, hoping not to damage the threads of course, but in case that couldn't be avoided I would have been okay with simply inserting a replacement bolt when reassembling the vise. But the old parts were so dirty and rusty and the old grease so hard or non-existent that I actually had to employ one post vise to repair another one. By the way, yes my workbench here is really way too shaky. I'm working on new workbenches right now and the new one will also be more rugged and bolted to the ground. One of the goals is of course to remove the old paint, but rather than starting out with a more invasive method I start by using an ordinary old fashioned wire brush to remove already rather loose flakes. This rather slow process allows me to take the time to inspect the surfaces of the vise a little closer. After the really loose parts have come off I start using a needle scaler to speed up the process. The needle scaler is well suited for removing thick brittle paint and also to remove paint inside in of indentations or corners that might not be that accessible with ordinary wire brushes. And here you can see all the old paint and rust that has come off already. And here is an intermediate before and after comparison. To really get the brunt of the remaining paint off and to also give the surface a more polished look I employ a big angle grinder with a wire wheel. 
While it works really well, this is also a very loud and dirty method. To get these bolts and other small parts cleaned, the wire wheel is really unpractical though because it is not very easy to fasten these parts on the workbench and it is also very unsafe to apply this angle grinder here because it can easily slip when it's used on a small edgy or pointy object rather than on flat surfaces. And that is why I'm using sandblasting to clean the smaller parts and bolts. And if you really want to get into those threads, for example, the sandblasting works really well. But of course, self-evidently, you also have to clean them very thoroughly after that because you don't want to have sand or media stuck in the threads, of course. You also need proper protection for your arms, face and also body maybe, because sandblasting can really hurt you. And if you don't use a blasting cabinet, then a lot of the media will be lost, which is of course very wasteful. And now it's the time to take care of the handle and screw. There is still old grease and possibly rust and earth inside these really deep threads on this old screw. I use a rag and some WD-40 to remove it. More aggressive solvents like gasoline or paint thinner would have worked as well, but they are much nastier to work with. Now with almost all the rust and paint removed, it is possible for the first time to inspect the vise in a more detailed fashion. This threaded part here that holds the back end of the screw has a tube attached to it and its purpose is apparently to cover the screw. It is obvious that it was welded at some point in time and apparently that weld has cracked open to some degree. This is not great, but since this tube seems to be holding in place and is normally not under a lot of stress, I leave it like it is for now. And more importantly, we also find a weld right in the middle of this part here that holds the front jaw of the vise. Incredibly, this might have snapped right in the middle at some point in the past. Not great to see this, but the weld looks massive and appears to be very rugged and I think that it might hold. And it also appears that this little anvil at the back side of the rear jaw has also broken off and has been welded back in place at some point in the past as well. Again, not great to see this, but since I never use these anvils, I don't really care that much. This support plate is also totally bent out of shape. And at first I thought that this might have been done on purpose, but comparing it to my older post vise and all the other ones that I've ever seen, I'm pretty sure that this should be straight, not bent. The same is true for the handle, it's bent like a banana. This vise has seen a lot of use and possibly abuse in the past, especially compared to the first vise I bought a few years ago. I will now try to straighten out the plate and the handle and for that I want to do something that I haven't done in years, actually firing up the forge and using the old anvil. The anvil has no place in the new shop yet and I will have to use it kneeling down. The forge itself also hasn't been used in years and the server fan blower that I built a couple of years ago is not even permanently attached to it at the moment. I will have to take care of more permanent solutions for the new shop soon. In order to get the blacksmith's coal to burn, I first set up a little wood fire, wait a few minutes and engage the blower at full speed and open the valve. After a few minutes, the coal fire is almost ready. This is a kind of forging job where not a lot of hammer blows are necessary, nor do they have to be very forceful. It's more about applying the right amount of force at the right angle in the right spot within a short period of time before the seal gets too cold again. With my very improvised forge set up at the moment, I want to get this over with as quickly as possible.
And even though they're probably not perfectly straightened now, they do look better than before, I'd say. And I'm using the wire wheel a last time for this project before I start to reassemble the vise. New grease is applied to the screw and the other parts. And I attach it temporarily to my wooden workbench. And then I move the front jaw back and forth until it slides easily enough for the old spring to take over and push the jaws apart by itself. As a last step I apply a thin oil film all over the vise, preventing it from rusting too quickly. And here is a little before and after comparison. And I think you'll see the vise again once it has found a proper place around here. So this was the first of the treasures that I retrieved from the old scrapyard. But there is much more where this came from and a second or third video are already in the making. These videos will also be uploaded in German on this channel and if you want to see them in German please check the video description for links. So I hope that you liked this episode and if so please give it a like. And if you want to see more please consider visiting my Patreon to support this channel. See you soon.